A writer became a star, an ex-girlfriend inspired a character, and the show all started as a series of commercials. As the show heads into its third season, only true fans will know these facts about Ted Lasso. The inspiration for a TV show can come from almost anywhere. Ted Lasso is one of the few times in television history that a full-length show was born out of a series of commercials. In 2013, around the time that he was leaving Saturday Night Live after eight years, Jason Sudeikis entertained an offer from NBC Sports to appear in spots to promote its broadcast of English Premier League Soccer. Why Sudeikis? Soccer from another nation was perceived as a hard sell and a distant concept to American sports fans, so NBC needed a familiar, funny face to make the introduction. Sudeikis told Entertainment Weekly, They had like four or five ideas, and one of them was an American coach coaching soccer in London. He added that the character the ad writers had initially devised was based on a character who played in some SNL sketches. However, Sudeikis was uninterested in portraying that kind of character anymore. I just saw something a little bit different, and that is what ended up becoming Ted Lasso. Like a nice guy, like, you know, kind heart, you know, someone that listens, someone that'll push you. Initially, the character of Ted Lasso is straightforward, an overly nice guy quick with a joke or compliment. He's a real-life Ned Flanders. Evening, neighbor. Low on funds again? But as the first season of Ted Lasso progresses, audiences learn that Ted's got a lot more going on than just that. Jason Sudeikis had to piece several influencers together to get the characterization just right. He told Collider, I just felt like it'd be nice to play someone kind as a little bit of a challenge to myself. It was an exercise in trying to prove to myself that it's possible to be a good person and still be interesting. And parts of the Ted Lasso look greatly inform how Sudeikis inhabits the role. My joke has been that Audrey Hepburn used to say that she really would find a character through the wardrobe through some Givenchy outfit. And me, it's facial hair and the aviators and the visor. On a broader level, Sudeikis, a comic actor playing a more serious part than he usually does, took cues from the dramatic part of Robin Williams, who took a similar career trajectory. According to Variety, Williams played a lot of teachers and mentors who, as Sudeikis put it, see more in you than you can see in yourself and bring a whole lot of that optimism. Counter to Ted Lasso's arc as an outsider finding his way in English professional soccer, there's a character of Roy Kent, a former superstar now past his prime who doesn't have too many seasons left in him. He's a stern guy who's not fond of showing his emotions, and actor Brett Goldstein plays a character with nuance and subtlety. Goldstein is a filmmaker, but he's also a performer with an extensive list of British TV and film credits. However, he wasn't on producer's radar to play Roy. Instead, he was initially hired as a member of the writing staff, having worked with co-creator Bill Lawrence years earlier on a TV pilot. But Goldstein helped Lawrence, Sudeikis, and the other writers in season one when he realized he wanted to do something more in the series. As Goldstein told Vulture, I just started to think I could play Roy. I really get it. I really get this part. But I also knew it was not the sort of part I would usually play. He was also afraid to ask if he could read for it because he didn't want to embarrass himself or anyone else. So on the eve of the final day of writing sessions, he taped himself doing five scenes as Roy, then emailed them to Lawrence, who said the audition was good. Ted Lasso writer Brett Goldstein landed the part of Roy Kent, but the role was sort of originated by another Ted Lasso writer, co-creator Brendan Hunt, who also acts on the show as Coach Beard. Hunt developed his comedy chops in the early 2000s as part of the comedy troupe Boom Chicago, which staged lots of shows in Europe. In that collective, he started working closely with Joe Kelly and Jason Sudeikis, and all three are credited with bringing Ted Lasso to television. In 2003, Boom Chicago's touring show explored some elements that would form the foundation of the Ted Lasso TV series. One sketch concerned an American trying to understand the unique culture surrounding Amsterdam's Ajax soccer squad. Another piece was a spotlight moment for Hunt, who impersonated and lampoons the acid-tongued Irish soccer star Roy Keane, who at the time played for England's dominant Manchester United squad. A bitter, real-life soccer star named Roy Keane is just a short jump to a bitter, fictional soccer star named Roy Kent. The premise of Ted Lasso is simple but compelling. An American football coach is hired to run an English football team, meaning soccer. He initially knows very little about the game because for him, like most Americans, soccer isn't a major sport. Amusingly, the American actor who plays Ted Lasso, Jason Sudeikis, found himself in a similar situation when the show began production. Sudeikis told Entertainment Weekly that, at the start, he knew very little about soccer and that he hadn't played the game since he was 10. Most of his knowledge came from his more advanced co-creator and co-star, Brendan Hunt. It also helped that he and Hunt have been playing EA Sports FIFA soccer video games together for 20 years. When Ted Lasso ramped up, Sudeikis, Hunt, and some of the show's other writers and cast members started playing a few nights a week with a customized team. 
In the game, as on the show, Sudeikis and his group plays as AFC Richmond, adding that, We designed the players to look like our guys as much as possible. Ted Lasso is a show about an American set in Great Britain, but behind the scenes, it's an American production with a theme song and score by a British musician, Marcus Mumford, frontman of the very popular band Mumford & Sons. Landing Mumford was relatively easy, as he's good friends with Ted Lasso star and co-creator Jason Sudeikis. They met when Mumford & Sons played Saturday Night Live during Sudeikis' tenure, and then the comedian appeared in the band's video for Hopeless Wanderer. But that's not the only fascinating tidbit about the soundtrack. Probably the most memorable musical moment on Ted Lasso occurs in For the Children, when a high-profile celebrity musician can't be secured to perform at the 10th annual benefit for underprivileged children, Ted brings in a street musician who dazzles the crowd with his singing and guitar work. That busker is Cam Cole, a real street musician who can be found performing on the streets of London. Ted Lasso is a charming and generous guy, and that manifests in his interactions with his boss, Rebecca. He offers the initially curmudgeonly Rebecca daily deliveries of shortbread cookies so delicious that they help endear him to his new boss, while ambitious home bakers have painstakingly studied the very brief scenes of Ted in the kitchen to figure out as many ingredients and techniques as possible, the ones used in shooting aren't anything to obsess over. Hannah Waddingham, who plays Rebecca, is the one person in the Ted Lasso cast who gets to eat those biscuits, and she isn't a fan, she told Vulture. They were chunky shortbreads that sucked all of the saliva out of my face when I was trying to act and talk at the same time. They weren't inedible, but they weren't like, yum yum yum, give me the biscuits. Ted Lasso is about a man coaching a storied, if presently not very good, soccer team in the top level of the English Premier League. And in the show, the team faces such legendary real-life opponents as Liverpool and Manchester City. Lasso's squad, however, isn't actually real. AFC Richmond was invented for the series. However, there are elements of reality to the team and even the neighborhood of London it supposedly represents. While it doesn't feel the Premier League soccer team in reality, Richmond is a real place. The actual Richmond is Richmond Park, or rather the Crown Estate of Richmond Park, located in the county of Surrey. As for the Premier League-level soccer stadium where AFC Richmond plays on Ted Lasso, it isn't in Richmond Park. The show's sporting sequences are produced at Selhurst Park, the home turf of actual team Crystal Palace FC. And as you've probably guessed from the name, the stadium can be found in Selhurst, a suburb of London. There's a big difference between American and British comedies. American sitcoms usually run indefinitely, with seasons consisting of around 20 episodes. British sitcoms might run for only a few series of a half dozen installments before the creators call it a day. Ted Lasso is an American show about British culture and it's following the lead of short and sweet predecessors like the UK version of The Office. In fact, it had its length planned from the get-go. Ted Lasso is designed to air for exactly three short seasons, an arc that's been hinted at in the show itself. In the season one finale, Ted tells owner Rebecca after the team is relegated to a lower division that he'll spend the next year getting them back to the Premier League, and then the year after that, they'll win the championship. So far, that's matched the season finales. The character of Keeley Jones, model, AFC Richmond PR consultant, and Roy Kent's love interest was encouraged in part by a woman in Sudeikis' life and evolved after the casting of Juno Temple. According to People, Sudeikis met English model and actor Keeley Hazel on the set of Horrible Bosses 2 in 2014. They briefly dated in 2021 after season 1 of Ted Lasso aired, in which Hazel appeared in three episodes as Bex, the partner of old AFC Richmond owner Rupert Mannion. Temple told Entertainment Tonight, she is a friend of Jason that inspired some of Keeley's character. She was an inspiration for the part. Sudeikis asked Temple with whom he shares an agent to play Keeley. As originally conceived, the Keeley character wasn't as outwardly comical as other Ted Lasso characters. But that changed after the read-through of the pilot script. Goldstein told The Independent, Not only was she funny, but us, the writers, were like, oh, she's funnier than we've written. The character that changed the most in the writing was Keeley because of Juno. In the season 1 finale, Ted excitedly exits Rebecca's office, energized about how he can solve a problem. As he runs out, he jumps up and clicks his heels together, knocking his head on the top of the doorframe. That brief and chaotic sequence was one part improv comedy and one part injurious accident. Sudeikis explained on The Drew Barrymore Show in 2021, I really hit my head there. That was a complete accident. I jumped up and then I, boom, cracked my head. I, I, I roll like I do, I stand up, I think I'm fine." Sudeikis then exited the scene as scripted and noticed first a trickle of blood coming from his head, and then a rapid flow of the stuff. On-set medics reacted quickly, using a liquid adhesive to seal the sizable wound so he could keep working. 
Ted Lasso is one of a handful of television series to win multiple Emmy Awards for Outstanding Comedy Series. While Cheers took home the prize four times, there's another Ted Lasso connection. George Wend was part of Cheers for 11 years, playing Barfly Norm Peterson. And the actor is the maternal uncle of Jason Sudeikis. As such, the Ted Lasso universe is laced with shoutouts to both its creator and star's uncle and his popular sitcom. In one scene, Roy Kent patronizes a kebab shop, and his photo graces the wall, flanked by autographed images of Marcus Mumford of Mumford and & Sons and Went. Elsewhere in Season 2, a workplace romance develops between Richmond AFC head Rebecca and player Sam, mirroring the Rebecca and Sam relationship in Cheers. And in one episode, this happens. Mm. Cheers. Night Court. Why does Ted say this? In the late 1980s, Night Court followed Cheers on NBC's Thursday night schedule. Sam Richardson almost always plays a nice and goofy guy on TV, notably in Veep and Detroitus. Richardson played against type when he showed up near the end of Season 2 of Ted Lasso as Edwin Afuko, a billionaire from Ghana who will stop at nothing to lure away AFC Richmond star Sam Obisanya for his own soccer team. Richardson has a lot of connections to the Ted Lasso creative team. He co-created Detroiters with Joe Kelly, one of the developers of Ted Lasso. While Sudeikis also served as a producer and guest starred in a couple of episodes of the Comedy Central series in 2017. Richardson's work on Ted Lasso brings a cameo favor full circle. Richardson's appearance as a villain was so crucial to the plot of Ted Lasso Season 2 that it was all kept under wraps. The actor revealed in an interview with Brad Galley, uh, it, was, it was a huge secret. I, I didn't want to like, like uh, give any of that away. When he went to London to film, he couldn't tell his relatives who lived there exactly why he was in town, or even that he was playing opposite a character named Sam, who he claims is his namesake.